bill that was passed by the United States Congress and signed into law by President Biden, March 11, 2021. It is intended to provide a substantial infusion of resources to help turn the tide on the pandemic and address its economic fallout and lay the foundation for a strong, equitable recovery. Last summer, the town of Woodbury received its first installment of the ARPA funds, which was $131,975. This coming summer, the second installment of the same amount will be coming, we think, around August. None of these funds have been spent yet. That's what we're all here to help figure out. The select board are the ones who created the ARPA committee. The members include myself, Heather Lampier, Laura Murphy, Tara Rogers, Dennis Farrell, and Retta Dunlap. The select board has tasked our group with the following goals. One of the biggest ones I think is gonna be the hardest is to educate the public about the opportunities and requirements of the ARPA bill. It's gonna be really tough to get the information out there and make sure that these monies are spent correctly. <clears throat> to assess the to assess the interests and priorities of the community regarding the ARPA funds. We wanna get as much input from our fellow Woodburyans as we possibly can. We need you all to talk about this as much as you can. We are tasked with uh, forming, making, and passing out the applications of the applications for community members to apply for the ARPA funds. We've been tasked with coming up with that application form. Um, and we're tasked with also getting them out to the people who want them and just trying to keep the lines of communication open. We are also going to be tasked with reviewing the applications uh, and sort of recommending to the select board which of a priority the, the committee feels are more important than others. But that's not to say, let me rephrase that, but all of the applications will be forwarded on to the select board. They will just be placed to the select board in a way of which we, as the committee members, feel are important. I hope I said that right. Right. But, but regardless, all of them are going, and they, the, the select board gets the final determination on who actually gets the money. That will be out of the committee's hands. That's in the select board hands. As a lot of you know, we have new select board coming. So I have a feeling a lot of these decisions will be put on hold until the new select people are elected. Um, one of the most important things that's gonna to have to be kept in mind is that all of these monies, if they're not spent correctly, and we will be audited by the government, if these monies are not spent correctly, we will have to pay that back. Let me say that again. If we don't spend this money correctly, we're gonna to have to pay it back. We want to make sure we get this right, guys. So we're taking our time. So if it seems like we're dragging our feet to some of you guys, I do apologize, but we're going slow because I don't want to have to pay any of this back because it's a lot of money. Uh, I kind of went off script there, so I apologize. Uh, all right, so today too, uh, tonight we are lucky enough to have as part of our informational meeting to give us all of our understanding of these ARPA funds. We have with us tonight, Katie Buckley. <laughs> She's from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and Grace Vincent Vinson from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Two ladies, which I am so psyched to have you here. Uh, could you both wave? Because I haven't met either of you yet. There's Grace and Katie. Nice to meet you both. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, I guess that's it for me, and you guys can take it over from here, please. By saying you did a great introduction, you did my whole presentation. I don't even need to be here now. So nice work, nice work. You're very well informed and I'm impressed. So um, I'm Katie Buckley. I am the director of the ARPA Assistance and Coordination Program with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And Grace, do you wanna introduce? Yeah, I'm Grace Vincent. I work at CVRPC and uh, I'm working in partnership with Katie. So each RPC received funding to help the respective communities with their ARPA funding. So I'm also a resource just like Katie. 
we work in close partnership together. I couldn't do this work without Grace and uh, I'm really glad you're here tonight. So we'll be happy. I have a slide deck that I'm gonna quickly, quickly run through. Um, and I will send a, a PDF of the, the slide deck to who, Laura, should I send it to you at the end so that you can have it for reference if you, if you want. Um, I, are you guys watching on a, a computer monitor? Is that what it is? Yes. Yep. Okay, so my slides might be hard to read. I apologize for that. I didn't realize it was gonna be that small. So I'll try and do more talking than having the slides do the talking um, for me. So I'm gonna screen share now, if that's okay. We'll jump right into it. Sound good? Great. And then I will talk fast, which I am told that I do. And then we'll, it'll leave a lot of room for question and answer. And um, just let me know if you can see that screen. Okay, yeah. awesome. Great, I'm gonna get right to it then. Okay, what I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna go over a little bit of background, but you guys already have that. Um, tell you a little bit about Vermont Share, what um, ARPA throughout Vermont looks like, the timeline and the planning, what you can spend your money on, the standard allowance, I'm not sure if you're aware of that yet, uh, big news in the final rule that was issued, uh, public engagement, Vermont and nationally, and then the role of Vermont League of Cities and Towns in the RPCs. So as you so eloquently covered, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act was passed into law, signed into law March 11th of last year. We've been in it for almost a year now, hard to believe. Um, it, the American Rescue, you'll hear us call it ARPA, it's the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Funds. That's a mouthful. ARPA is a lot easier to say, but you'll see those two acronyms used a lot. They're synonymous. Um, it's $350 billion that went out to eligible uh, state, local, territorial, and tribal governments. And the purpose of the funding, as you said, was to support governments in their response and recovery um, from the COVID-19 public health emergency. And all of the money is going through US Department of Treasury. You'll hear us reference that as Treasury pretty often. Um, and they are uh, they issued a the implementation side of the American Rescue uh, Plan Act is called the final rule. And it was the final rule came out January 6th and we had all been operating under the interim final rule um, for seven months, uh, which was a very different sort of set of requirements. Um, and Vermont share, Vermont is getting a total of $1.25 billion of American Rescue Plan Act funding. Um, in that first box there, you'll see all of the local money, the metro cities, they are Burlington and South Burlington, non-entitlement units of government, that is everybody else, every other um, town, city, and village in Vermont. Uh, and then there was county money that was allocated, but as you likely know, the uh, we don't have county style of government here in Vermont, so uh, that county money was reallocated to municipalities, which make local awards that much bigger than um, your counterparts throughout the country. Oops, sorry, my finger slid over my mouse. Um, so the total local ARPA money that's in the, went out to 277 towns, cities, and villages is about $200 million. The state of Vermont got a little over $1 billion. Half of that was allocated during the last legislative session and about half um, remains and is being allocated during this legislative, legislative session, which is underway right now. And all of that rolls up to that $1.25 billion. Um, just a bit of housekeeping throughout my slides. If you see bolded language with underlining, it's um, a link. So if you have the PDF um, and you open it on your computer after and you click on it, it will take you to either a web page or a re reference resource throughout. So there's a lot of uh, links throughout this slide deck. Um, <clears throat> state and local ARPA. Um, they it's all governed by the same rule. The final rule governs the state money, it go governs the local money, um, and all the rules of the road are the same regardless of um, the funding. So as I said, final rule is the implementation. It governs everything, the timeline. You received your first payment, as you mentioned, you have half of that cash in the bank. Uh, you received it last summer and you'll get the other half this summer. That's the, the local and the county money combined. You'll get it probably in August or September of this year. All funds must be obligated by December 31st, 2024, and all funds must be spent by December 31st, 2026. And any funds not spent by De 
December 31st, 2026 must be returned to Treasury. And as I said, that same timeline, same rules applies to your local money. It also applies to the state's money that they're deploying. Um, this is VLCT's planning framework. If you're looking at it on a computer screen, it's going to look pretty busy. Um, the thing to remember, aim for that sweet spot. Prioritize good governance, leverage your ARPA money, and invest in best long-term uses for long-term recovery. Um, and if you can find an intersection of all three of those things, that's what you want to shoot for. So eligible uses. When under the interim final rule, Grace, I'm sure you'll be right, right arm in arm with me, looking at this table of eligible uses for the last seven months has been quite a challenge. It, uh, for, especially for small communities throughout the country, um, we have small rural governments, uh, elected officials, no paid staff in a lot of instances, um, makes it really hard to find uses for this money and administer this money. Um, so there were seven categories under which you could spend. And then under those seven categories are 66 subcategories. Um, and we've spent a lot of time in the last seven months trying to fit square pegs into round holes, trying to help small communities find ways that they can spend their ARPA money that fall in line with all of these eligible uses. Um, and instead of being able to focus the spending on what is really needed for each community's unique needs. So um, Treasury had a public comment period for the interim rule, and uh, they received literally thousands of comments. Uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns submitted comments as well as along with municipalities, other municipal leagues, all sorts of entities submitted comments. Um, and this table has created a lot of angst and frustration for many, definitely, Grace and I. Um, so, whoops, sorry, my mouse, I keep sliding my finger over the top of it. Um, so we've been operating under this table, very difficult with the final rule. Why would you go through all of that when the final rule allows you a $10 million standard allowance for lost revenue? I don't know how much you know about the eligible use categories, but uh, replacing lost revenue we had a calculator that we had created to help towns calculate their lost revenue using Treasury's really complicated formula. Um, and any amount of lost revenue that you could calculate through that formula, you could use for the provision of government services. It is the most flexible, nimble expenditure category of the ARPA funding. And so we were really trying to help towns find that dollar amount so that they could have some flexibility in their spending because finding uses in the other categories was really, really hard. And so we hoped through our public comment and all of the response that we would get more flexibility and simplicity when the final rule was issued. We never anticipated that we get a $10 million standard allowance. And so basically what that means is that every town in Vermont, with the exception of Burlington, can claim their entire award as lost revenue and use it for the provision of government services. So you'll see the little sign being held seriously. Like all of us who have been doing this have we're shocked. And the answer is yes, seriously, take, take the standard allowance. And so what it allows you to do is do all of the, the um, work that you, if you've been contemplating ways to spend it in the last seven months, you can do all of those same, um, all of, meet all of those same priorities. You'll just do it reporting under the expenditure category 6.1 provision of government services that will simplify reporting um, and it will really make things much, much easier from a grant management perspective for whoever is doing that in your community. Um, so the $10 million um, standard allowance is for the entire performance period. Um, recipients will take a, a one-time irrevocable election. So when you go in and do your reporting, um, you can either choose to do the formula, which we do not recommend, um, but you can take your entire award as lost revenue. Um, and there's no, whoops, sorry about that. There's no need to do the calculation. Treasury presumes that this was um, lost revenue. You don't need to show documentation or, or calculation of that. It is presumed by Treasury. You automatically are allowed to do it. And the definition of government services, if you click that link, it'll take you through to our website where we have a more robust definition. But it's generally, it's anything that a government traditionally provides. So it might not even be something that you're doing right now, but if it is something that governments typically do, whether it's yours or uh, another government across the country, um, then you can fund that using your ARPA money. So before uh, you could not, 
you could not use your ARPA money for, I don't know, help me out here, Grace, some things, road maintenance. Uh, yeah, building a new road. Um, yeah, repa repair to a bridge. Yeah. Helping your fire department with fire equipment. Um, just you ha now have a very wide berth of what you can spend your money on. Um, just some high level stuff for the final rule. It takes effect April 1st, uh, but they're allowing recipients to start using it now with no penalty. Um, it promises streamline reporting and compliance requirements, which it seems to be we're waiting for more guidance to come out. Um, as you mentioned, the legislative body, your select board is the ultimate arbiter of, of how the funds will be spent. There's no higher authority. There is no approval process. Um, the select board decides all municipalities will report to treasury through an online portal, which already exists. Um, all municipalities, excluding Burlington, have an annual reporting um, that is due each year by April 30th. And that's this year, starting this year, April 30th, uh, ending uh, 2027. Uh, aside from that $10 million standard allowance, which is really quite huge, pretty much everything is the same. Um, terms and conditions still apply. The, our message remains the same, which is take your time, be patient, think bigger. I think you all are doing that, which is great. You haven't spent any money yet. You're sitting back, you're waiting, you're being strategic. Um, there's more money coming. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act passed. That's going to bring $2.2 billion to Vermont in various ways. A lot of it will go through um, the state, but uh, there will be grant programs available for municipalities. So you can use your ARPA funding as grant match. So keeping some of that back and thinking about what you wanna do, what type of projects you might wanna carry out, holding your ARPA money as a grant match is a great thing to do because a lot of grants often have a 20% grant match. And if you don't have that cash on hand, that's unrestricted, it becomes hard to apply for that funding. Uh, build back better, who knows where, where that will land, but there's a lot of money out there. In addition, there's the states, billion dollars of ARPA money, half of it's out the door, the other half, we'll see how it gets deployed. Um, you're doing exactly as you should. You're gathering information, you're engaging your community, you're learning more. Um, you, you don't have to scratch your head anymore about, oh gosh, how are we gonna spend this money? You really have a lot more flexibility in terms of uh, the priorities for your town, determining what they are, and then seeing if ARPA is a great, uh, punch of cash to help you achieve some of your goals and playing the long game. Um, you know, looking looking out on the road ahead to see what you might want to do now, but what you want to might save some, hold some back and plan and strategize, especially if there's other funding coming that would help your community. Uh, public engagement and outreach. Uh, public engagement is not a requirement of the funding like it is for so many other federal awards. Um, however, it's implicit throughout all the language of both the interim final rule and the final rule. Um, we've seen communities do everything from dedicated select board meetings all the way down to websites with surveys and everything in between. So uh, whatever is right for your community is what we're seeing across the state of Vermont. And for these are just a few towns that uh, I found online. And as I said, there's um, all of that stuff is, oops. Am I going, is it? Yeah, you can see all the links on the screen. Sorry, I was looking at my wrong screen. Um, so all of those are links if you wanted to click through and see what other towns are doing in terms of getting um, a presence online. Uh, nationally, we are, Vermont League of Cities and Towns is a member of National League of Cities and uh, National League of Cities created this pretty cool um, local government ARPA investment tracker. So if you're curious to know what our peers are doing in other states, um, you can go in there and check that out. Uh, I think it pulls data from what's been reported thus far. So you'll probably see a lot of city information. Um, so the scale will be different, but it's always interesting to see what other towns are doing, um, cities are doing across the country. Um, Treasury has some information, some early reporting highlights, um, and ICMA has a, a, a report you can download just if you are interested in knowing what others are doing. Uh, in Vermont, uh, we've received, I think, 1,500 email inquiries alone. Um, and from the inquiries that I've received, these uh, the next couple of slides are ideas that are being entertained by more than one community. They're, they're 
they're the popular items of what I get questions about. And so um, everything from cybersecurity measures, um, hybrid meeting equipment, uh, so that you can carry out your hybrid meetings uh, without glitches, um, connecting public buildings to broadband, digitizing land records, making capital improvements. You can do capital improvements now that aren't just ventilation. You can address weatherization, code improvements, all sorts of stuff as the provision of government services. You can do um, IT changes if you need to um, update your computer equipment in the town offices. You can update your website or enhance your website if you have a capital plan um, already in place. You can further your capital plan initiatives or even form a capital plan if you don't have one. You could um, use your funding to get yourself positioned for that. There are a lot of towns who are entertaining the idea of seating a town administrator position that um, that person could then go chase grants for the town um, for deeper impact and more leverage. And then for revitalizing community, lots of communities that were inquiring about outdoor recreation, trails, parks, green spaces, that sort of stuff. Towns who are interested in furthering their um, diversity, equity, and inclusion for their communities, uh, forming committees and advancing that work. Childcare, um, housing is a huge issue. Uh, anything from acquiring land, land banking, um, and getting lots development ready so that more housing development can take place, uh, improvements to bike and pedestrian safety, community gathering places, and also support to uh, a lot of curiosity and interest around um, support for local nonprofits. Um, just some things to consider as you're, you're Contemplating your own ARPA awards, look for uh, opportunity to leverage. Uh, use your town plan as a good guidebook for you. Your town plan is your playbook, right? It has all your priorities in there. You've already done that, that hard work of identifying that. Um, and all of that exists in your town plan. Um, if you're carrying out any sort of infrastructure projects, what sort of future planning can you um, it be incorporated into the project's design so that you can achieve multiple priorities? Even if you can't, um, carry out the priority right now. Can you plan the design of the project so that, uh, you know, in the future, you'll be ready should more funding come? Um, this is Vermont League. This is me. I'm our persistence and coordination program. I do this all day, every day. It's my full time job. Um, this and federal funding in general. So um, I work, as we said, closely with the RPCs. Uh, I couldn't do it without them. Um, and Everything from ARPA at VLCT, which is our, our e dedicated email address to answering questions via email, lots of time on the phone. We do webinars just like uh, we've been having over the course of the last year. We do one-on-one -on -one training um, meetings just like we're doing tonight on Zoom. Uh, if you have a need, we will fill it as it relates to ARPA. Uh, this is a slide for the Regional Planning Commissions, 11 of them throughout the state covers the entire entire state, every town. So there's resources for every town, no matter what the need around this funding. And that's my contact information and Grace's contact information. And I'm gonna stop screen sharing. And I hope that you can all still hear us and that we can take whatever questions that you have. Thank you very much. That was very informative, I appreciate that. You bet. It was uh, so the, the grant match part. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, if you can use your ARPA funds for grant match. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not even actually sure what that means. So sure. Start, start um, back it up and define it, and then. So I don't know. Does Woodbury traditionally use grants um, for any projects that it does? Probably yes. Madison Highway or Culvert. Yes, but, yes, we're being told yes from our select board. Yep. Okay. Okay. So typically with most grants, um, there's a grant match requirement. It can be 10%, um, 20%, 50%. And so that would be the town's share that uh, if you got a $100,000 grant and there was 20% grant match, that means the town has to come up with $20,000 as their share um, to get the grant. Uh, oftentimes it's cash. And it's a tough thing to just find that money in a small, tight local budget. So you can use your ARPA funding as grant match. 
about funding for school projects? Um, can you give give me an example of um, our schools here are trying to specifically build uh, outdoor learning space? Um, um, this I think Ed got some ARPA funding of its own, separate from the local. Okay. And I think I talked to Michael previously about how the town would be utilizing that space as well. So I don't know, maybe some finagling, maybe the town, maybe the town would be spending general fund money if ARPA wasn't around on such kind of space, if they were going to be utilizing the space too. So just kind of think through like who would be the beneficiary of a project if the town would be collaborating with someone else then. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's and helpful. the answer is yes, if the school is in your town, right? It's a yeah. elementary yeah. school in the town. A, a joint project between the town and the school. Um, there's a committee yeah. that's been working on it, and um, there would be an agreement that the town can also have use of it. Um, yeah. It is an outdoor classroom um, that we're planning. Um, and the town would also have use of it for any meetings or I'm gonna guess it's like a pavilion probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it'll actually be you can spend your ARPA money on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I our our job got so much easier as of January. Yeah. <laughs> We've been saying no. Well, hmm, not really, you know, for seven months, and then all of a sudden it's like, yes, yes, yes. It's so nice to be able to say yes. I see a hand back there. Yeah, I, I have a question. I, I just want you to reiterate um, uh, back step, if you will. You had said, and I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this, that the ARPA money could not be used for infrastructure, fire department. Did, did I hear that correctly or is that this? Prior to, prior to, with the, with the issuance of the final rule, you can spend your money on that stuff before you could not. Okay, I, I didn't hear yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So is there a, still a requirement that the project be COVID related? No. No? No. Uh, no. Why are we here? <laughs> Provision of government services. Uh, it's pretty, it's, it's essentially anything that your town would spend its general fund money on or highway fund money. Basically what you, the types of expenses that you would vote in on town meeting day, you can spend your ARPA money on that. And, and beyond. No, another question. This um, process of uh, requiring or requesting money would be directly through the select board if each town. Is that how that works? Well, how do you apply? When, when you say requesting money, do you mean local people requesting money or the a town? Non, a nonprofit in the town of Woodbury requesting some funds. Um, I would imagine your ARPA committee, that sounds like the charge of the ARPA committee that they'll come up with a process for, for that. And every every town is different in how they're carrying out that process. Okay, thank it's you. It's definitely not a one size fits all type of scenario. I've had a community member approach me and ask me here in Woodbury, we have a, a, a water tub, for lack of a better word. It's a really cool little place where local people get fresh water that don't have running water in their homes. Uh, one of our old time Vermont or old time Woodbury residents approached me and asked me if we could spend the ARPA money on making that a safer, better spot. My question is it's right on route 14. So I don't know if we own it or if it's a privately owned or if the town owns it, I don't know. I, I was going to say, I'm going to guess it's a, it's in um, agency of transportation's right away. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. can we spend money on that or no? Is that a project um, that you might consider or how would I find out? Uh, well, if it's in the, that's a, that's a bit of a hairy one. <laughs> um, if it's in the agency of transportation's right away, uh, you're, you'd want to be cautious about that. Yeah. I can put you in touch with the VTrans district technician that serves Woodbury to get more information on that. Just to, yeah, find out if that's... Do you know that person's name off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head, but I definitely have his email. Okay. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yes. So thank you. I just, I, I wonder how that would go because whether it was state land or 
Mm -hmm. that water has never been tested. Yeah, I was going to say that the yes, other issue is, is water quality safety. Right, whether that's tested or not, it doesn't stop people from going and loading up their that's right. huge gallons and gallons and gallons of water. And if there's any way to make it safer, cleaner, better, I think that benefits all of Woodbury and makes it a, a much more, it looks like trash right now. And I think we could do a lot of work to make it not look like trash. But I don't know if we can spend money on that. Right, but I, I, I was the part of my job as a committee member is tasked to find out if we can spend money in that way. We have some properties, <laughs> have properties in town. So. Yes, and uh, properties in town that are struggling with sewerage and that kind of thing. Can the monies be directed? to individuals for cleaning up sewer issues and wastewater? Um, yes, but there is also a state program that you might wanna direct your residents to first. So um, as you're contemplating local need, um, you might have uh, residents in your community who are struggling uh, with housing expenses, for example. Uh, there are quite a few programs that uh, can provide your residents with financial assistance, all types of assistance for mortgage, taxes, insurance, utilities, rental. Um, we have on our, our ARPA page on our website, um, resources for Vermonters in need, housing resources for Vermonters, and it's links to all of those programs. So if you're contemplating doing direct assistance for your residents, go to those sources first, direct your residents to those sources first. Those programs are already stood up and they are backed with lots of money. Um, the homeowners assistance program just opened a week or two ago. It has $50 million there uh, and residents, uh, homeowners in need could get up to $30,000 through that. Um, in addition to the financial resources that are available to folks in need, there's also supportive other supportive systems in place. There's financial counseling, debt counseling, all of that sort of stuff. So in addition to the funding, they also get um, some additional supports should they need it. So um, as you're contemplating local need, see what else is out there uh, first and direct people to that. And then you might backstop it if, if you're really wanting to help your residents. Um, same with your businesses. If there are small local businesses that are struggling, um, the Regional Development Corp, I should have looked this up first. Who's the RDC? Is it Green Mountain? It's Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation. Okay, sorry. With um, Jamie Stewart, yeah. Okay, okay. And the RDC can help small businesses connect them with resources, both financial assistance and counseling in terms of financial counseling to get them through to the other side of COVID. So it seems like there's a bit of a fine line between direct services and communal services. I, I was under the impression the ARPA money was to be spent to better the community at large and for community projects. But now with these new rulings, it also can be used as what you're, I believe what you are calling as direct support to individual families. It could have been, you could have used it on direct support all along. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was that's that was one of the eligible uses of it. Um, but for a small community to stand up a grant program, it might be a lot of it's a lot of administrative work to get an application drafted, a whole process created, selection committee awarding it, tracking it, all of that sort of stuff. So um, for some small towns, they're like, well, we just can't do that. Um, it's beyond our sort of administrative capacity to do that. There are other resources available so that you can still connect your residents with the things that they need, um, just not do it at the local level. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one more question. Does that mean after uh, small businesses or whatever in the town uh, are awarded money through your agency, whatever? Yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, is there a way we have to uh, reply to you of the usage of that money? Okay, you're saying we don't have to fill out the form. No, you, no, you, you, um, 
you already have the town of Woodbury already has half the money. And, and the town of Woodbury's relationship around this money is between the town of Woodbury and treasury. But they have the, the treasurer has to, has to account for it. There's yeah, so you'll report to treasury once a year, every year. Okay, thank you. You'll go through your online portal and you'll enter in your information there. I'm gonna guess some lucky person, maybe a select board member, maybe your treasurer is gonna be the one who gets to go through that portal and do all of that, that reporting which isn't actually that bad anymore now with the final rule. I have a question. Sure. Um, can you tell, tell us a little bit about what last mile broadband is? And I've heard some, um, some proposals from a, a local fiber company agency group that's starting, that's recommending or asking for towns to contribute a little bit of their ARPA funds to a to this project. Would, is that the same thing, the last mile idea, or, or is it something else? Grace, do you mind taking that one? Because there might be some local. Yeah, I mean, I know the last mile is the idea of the internet gets to one house, but you know, half a mile down the road, that house doesn't have internet. And the whole idea is to kind of connect and create this holistic system and get that infrastructure in that would allow that connection. I know the Vermont Community Broadband Board, which is relatively new, is providing grant funding to um, communication unions districts. So the one in our region is called CV Fiber. That's the one that might have approached you. Yeah. So they are, it's kind of happening in parallel. The CV Fiber, which is a communication unions district, is getting money from the state, essentially to help with that last mile to get infrastructure up and running. Um, and then I'm not fully clear on the timeline, you know, when is CV Fiber getting that money versus when would they need additional funding? Um, but I do know that CV Fiber has been approaching a lot of towns, um, asking for funding to kind of supplement that grant funding. So it's a it's an interesting relationship because, yeah. So they're definitely getting grant funding from the state. It's I think it's not clear at this point how much additional funding they would need for all of that infrastructure because some of them are in different stages of planning and design and things like that. Okay. TV Fiber came and talked to us the other day. And so if you, okay. if you want to hear what they had to say about it, you can watch the last select board meeting. Okay, I will. Um, it was very interesting. Okay, Thank you. that will give me more context, and then I can get you a better answer. And it's different all over. Yeah, the state. exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm unsure how to answer it. Yeah, I didn't know what the particular where you stand in that. Right. Um, I, I can say that Vermont is way ahead of the game um, compared to other states in terms of uh, being organized around um, statewide deploying deployment of broadband well that's because we have so little broadband already <laughs> well we're small it was it's but, a big and deal <laughs> and we're grassroots so we know how to organize and get stuff done right so the whole communication union district is a concept that um other states aren't doing it we did it from the ground up here in vermont and it's um it has been over a decade, I think, that communication union districts, whether it's formally through Vermont statute or informally that they just formed and started doing it anyway. Um, but we are a lot further. And I, as Grace mentioned, um, I think there's a $200 million that is going out through uh, the Vermont Community Broadband Board. Um, and millions of dollars is already being put out on into um, communication union districts. I just didn't know what yours was and it, how much they received through a construction grant. Yeah, I can they check apply, on that. They probably got it. Yeah, I was I was gonna try and snoop around yeah. while, while you guys were answering questions to see if I could find out if they were awarded. And is it, what is it? It's CV it's Fiber? It's CV Fiber, yeah. Okay. And they did talk about funding a bit at the meeting and all of the funding that they're getting and they're, what, if I understood it correctly, they said that the ARPA fund would specifically go to offset um, the charges that individuals would be assessed to sign up for the broadband. Mm. So it was, it was uh, that was their intention. Was to okay. Offset, um, sign up fees. 
That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I'll definitely watch that meeting and then I can get back to you. The, the question I had about, uh, so it's, you know, sort of broadened out what the, what the money can be spent on anything, basically any, any government services. Mm -hmm. Does that include nonprofit organizations? Mm -hmm. That's considered a government service and not profit organization. Yeah, I mean, you appropriate to them in your budget every year. Many, many nonprofit agencies who do work in your community. I mean, I think, I think the key thing that you'd want to consider is the benefit to the community. Right. So my follow up question to that is a very specific here in Woodbury. Um, our cute little library has a, an annual pie breakfast uh, that we haven't been able to have for two years because mm -hmm. of what we're living through. So somebody from the library could apply for the monies that they lost mm -hmm. by not having a pie breakfast. So yep. that as a nonprofit, right, because yep. they're just a cute little library. And then yeah. just to follow that up one more time with, um, we have a little, it's Friends of Woodbury. It's like a little PTO kind of little that do a lot of work for our kids, specifically here at Woodbury Elementary. They can also apply because they have not been able to have any of their fundraisers either. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. Just answering one. Thank you. <laughs> yes, got so much easier. <laughs> Very good. So it almost feels like the focus is more now on finding out what our community is interested in in terms of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. The door is wide open in terms of. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it might've made it easier for you guys, but I feel like it's gonna make it harder for a lot of people because now you've opened up a whole, your, your little pot of money for a few people just became a little pot of money for yeah. a lot of people. Well, I, I think of it this way, you got, 263,000 and change, right? right? It's a lot of money. Is it enough money to solve all your problems? Absolutely not, right? And so before, because it was so challenging to try and spend it, um, you had to try and fit, as I keep saying, the square pegs into the round holes. Now it's almost worse for a town right. because if you had already started a process and you were down the road of the process, you might rethink that entire process now knowing that you have this wide, wide range of things that you can spend it on. And your, your, your field of competition just got much, much bigger. Yeah. So your process has to be that much tighter so that when you have a person coming in asking for funding, you will be able to explain to your residents and voters, here's why this was awarded, here's why this was not awarded because you're gonna have far more, far more no's than yeses. Right. And, and I think you know the goal of any exercise, anytime I'm told no, I'll just be totally blunt. I'm not great with, you know, when I do grant applications or whatever, being told no and not getting my funding, right? Um, but if I understand why it wasn't funded, I might not, I don't have to like it, but if I understand it and it's logical, then I'm, then I'm fine with it. And so, ensuring that your process um, has folks who are told no, they understand why they were told no, and they accept it. Around the idea of the process, our committee is trying to figure out how to set deadlines. And mm -hmm. you know, because we're sort of uh, struggling with some projects that some people and folks in town that feel like they could use the money sooner than later for things that you know sort of are COVID related. Um, and then wanting to allow for the time for people to formulate their thoughts and get their budgets in order and try and figure out, you know, so that creativity piece takes a little bit of time to put together. Mm -hmm. so we don't, we're having a hard time coming up with how to state a, a deadline for our application that allows for both of those things. And there's, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. You could, um, you could take your total amount of your funding and decide, you know what, we're going to do a hundred thousand dollars. I'm, I'm just, I'm just making up numbers here. Not that I'm suggesting, please don't. I'm just doing for an example. Um, so we might take, I'll use percentage. We're going to take 25% of our award and we're going to make that round one. And we're going to have rolling applications through this point, you know, through August 1st. 
And so it will be through August 1st or the funds are exhausted, whichever comes first, right? Um, and so you might see how that goes and then you might have another round or maybe your round smaller, you know, it, whatever. You, so it's, do you wanna do it on a rolling basis or do you wanna do it where you're gonna wait all applications come in at a deadline, you make your choices, you will make your awards that one time and you're done. I think we were thinking more towards the rolling, but you've made it, this is wonderful information. It sounds like we're kind of on the right track. So we, I guess we just wanted to know from you that we were actually on the right track. Good question, thank you for bringing it up. And I think, I mean, it's also a struggle because we don't actually, as a committee, we have to work with the select board because we don't actually, we can make recommendations, but then the select board can decide really how it's allocated. So we'll wait till the next select board comes and discuss that. But we don't want to, we don't want to set up a, a system that then doesn't get followed because that's sure. a recipe for people being upset. So, mm -hmm. You know, people, like you said, as long as you know what the expectations are and understand what the criteria was, you can accept yeah. it either way. So. so I have a question for the, the committee. <clears throat> have you thought of preparing some kind of um, rubric or some kind of uh, evaluation criteria so that the people who are writing and and seeking funds can see it as well as the recipients of the decisions can see how they fell along a, a, a spectrum of priorities. We haven't gotten that far. Right? I will say I will say there was another town I can't remember the name off the top of my head but the, their select board did create a matrix. This was back under the interim final rule so it would have to be tailored a little bit but they did do some work uh, thinking about what kind of evaluation criteria could be used. Like, is there another program that this project could be funded under? What kind of community impact is it? Is it COVID related, which isn't as relevant now that the final rule has passed, but I could pass that on to you all if that would be helpful. I can help you create a new one. I'm here as a resource to, you know, help you with the application, help you with community engagement, anything like that. Right. Thank you. I love that. I will say the town of Westford. Um, yeah, it might have been. Just, I, I actually think that you're thinking it, it's like Pittsburgh or. Yeah, it might have been Pittsfield. I can't remember, but it's yeah. over on the it's over on the Rutland side, is the mm -hmm. one that you're thinking of. But I do know Westford just because I was working with them, um, that they created a whole rubric. Mm. That, um, I'm actually opening their web page right now to see I don't know if they've actually posted it yet um, but if if the committee is interested in uh you know I what is it imitation is the sincerest form of flattery is that the, yeah and so don't don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to ask someone bend their ear ask if they if you can use their stuff and modify it and 99 percent of the time people will say of course Sure. <laughs> you know, so so ask, but Westford did. And if you're interested in that, I can give you the contact name of the, the person there if you want to reach out. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about doing any kind of survey, like mailing a survey or anything like that, Jericho had a really, I think theirs was online, but Jericho had a really yeah. good mm -hmm. survey. And a lot of towns are doing surveys, I'm seeing. Yeah. We started a survey, but I think it was based on the old information. So I think we need to kind of go back to the drawing board on our survey. Uh, who else? Someone else had a really good survey. Um, maybe Newfane, I think. Mm. And so um, what the committee did, I believe in Newfane was, uh, you know, look at their documents. They had they have their town plan, obviously. They had some other planning documents that the um, town had done. And so what they did is they combed through all of that. And they pulled out um, the what they thought were the biggest priorities based on local um, feedback just over the years. You know what those are, what rises to the top and what doesn't. And they think they put together um, a real sort of strategic survey around those priorities so that they got people to 
basically vote on a set of predetermined priorities based on existing plans. So it wasn't just asking survey questions that were all over the board. It was a it was a directed, and it was really helpful and it's guiding their process. And they had some surprises of what people, they ranked it and how it came back, I think was uh, different than what they would have guessed, so. Yeah, I'd like to see that if there's any. Uh, I mean, or maybe that's not something you can show. Yeah, that sounds it was very specific to their town. But um, but this but the structure of it, it might sometimes just seeing it. If I can get my hands on it, I'll I'll get it. I'll get it to you. Yeah, town plan is a great place to look for ideas, hazard mitigation plan. I am an emergency management planner, so I gotta make that plug for you know aging infrastructure. That's a great place to look. I'd be happy to look at. Woodbury's hazard mitigation plan and send project ideas from that. That would be pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, any other planning documents are really great to look at for ideas. And just so you're, just to make things more complicated and confusing, um, there is some legislation that's going through the state house right now about the idea uh, proposed bill that should be up about uh, fuel switching for municipal buildings. So it'll be uh, potentially systems, weatherization, all of that sort of stuff could potentially come. That's a, has, I think, $40 million going along with it. It could potentially be funded with some of the state's ARPA capital money, which is separate from that 1.2 billion. Um, and so there could be more funding that's coming. So if you have ideas of, community center type buildings in, you know, whether it's the small library or it's some other community center type building. Like I know in my old community, it was our Grange Hall. Um, and so we use that like the de facto town hall and where it wasn't owned by the town, it was definitely considered a huge municipal resource. We did our, it was our polling place. We held public meetings there. So the town was really roped in and bought into wanting to support that building. And so you might have buildings like that in your community where you wanna assist in that way. Um, and there could be other funding that's coming in that you could match with your ARPA funding. Yeah. Well, I, got a, I guess I got a question. We have a community building in town, which the town does not really own, correct? What's that? Yeah, the town. Town owns town hall. But we don't own We don't own the ground under it. So would that be a piece of property that we could invest money in? So you you own the building, not the land. Correct. There's a you could get the lease for the land. Correct. It's a this piece of lease land. Yep. Are you asking if you can invest if in the building can itself? Put money into that building as part of this. Yep. Okay. What's your lease agreement on the land? Do you have a perpetual lease, or do you have like a thirty-year? We basically have to use the town hall at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Otherwise, you're in default and you lose. Correct. Okay. And now with the pandemic, we're using it a lot. Um, except in the winter time, because the heating and insulation is really horrible. Yep. You could do that if you wanted to winterize the building to make it for year-round use. You could do that. What about the East Palace General Store that's trying to open? It's not in our town, but it would definitely benefit. Uh, they have a nonprofit for that, right? Yeah. I mean, if you you could make a contribution to it if you wanted to, with the idea that um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Um, Woodbury is is Woodbury further out than Callis? Yes. yes. 
Okay, so it would actually be a food source for your community as as well, right? Yes. Yes, it's the closest. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a huge majority of the town drives right by it. It's a definitely. Yeah, this really opens up it a lot really of things. It makes things much more complicated, <laughs> I feel like. I, I don't, that's, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it makes it any easier at all. I think it makes it, it makes it harder, I think. It does, it does, because mm -hmm. there's a lot more fish looking for mm -hmm. what little that we have. And then, mm -hmm. oh, bigger, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Cool. But you have till 2024 to obligate the money, remember. There you go. Right. Right. Yeah, you have time. I, I, this is it's not a race. All right. Does anybody else have any more questions? Does the town own the land under the fire department? Yes. yes. The town owns the land. The fire department belongs to the town. Uh, no, the fire department. Fire department means the land of the fire department. You're a private non-profit. Okay. So if they move across the street, is that going to work? You build a general store here. <laughs> Ooh, I like that idea. You can have a mobile general store. <laughs> but we still have septic problems in the area. I'll run it. Right? So yeah, you'd have to do septic. something septic. And yeah, 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 no, it wouldn't work. But if you piss us, it could. Huh. Yeah. I bet there's a lot of stuff for that. There's a huge problem with that. Sorry, we've gone down yeah, a different sorry. road. No, that's not road. We're all wrong. Everybody wants a general store in town. So I think we might I have I have a special fondness for general stores. Yeah. Yes. We miss <laughs> ours desperately. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, our general store owner went on to bigger and better things. Yeah. Um, but if, I think if, if everybody, if we could take a second, everybody in Woodbury, are we good with Katie and Grace? We can let them go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, thank ladies. You. If you yeah, go, thank you. you so uh, how about this? How about I send, um, I think, Grace, you have the my, deck. Yeah. I don't think I edited beyond hitting send, although I could have found a grammar issue or two. So I'll send okay. you, I'll send you the final, final. And if you yeah, mind, I can send it on. Yeah, you bet. Sure. And, and know that we are available. If you have any follow up questions, any anything, you can email one or both of us, and we're more than happy to to help out in whatever way we can. And you know, it's it's beyond ARPA money as well. I said I have a special fondness for general stores. I have a lot of sort of weird background. So if you have a question, even if it's tangentially related, ask between the two of us. We'll find you an answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, ladies. Bye.